Hey, Dodgers Nation. On this week's 3 Up, 3 Down, we're going to talk about why the Dodgers can't seem to beat the Padres anymore, the highs and lows of Julio Urias, and the Dodgers reliever that not enough people are talking about. Welcome back to another edition of the 3 Up, 3 Down podcast, a Dodgers Nation production. Be sure to check out all of our great content on DodgerNation.com, and please subscribe, rate, review to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel, which is where you'll find the flagship Blue Heaven podcast with Clinton Brook and Dodgers Dugout with Doug McCain. But you can find me, Eric Ulo, your host for this 5-Minute Dodgers podcast on Twitter and Instagram. That is at E-E-U-L-A-U. I'm recording this episode before first pitch of the final game of the Dodgers Cubs series, which will be on Sunday Night Baseball. I think our close friend Alex Rodriguez will be there and just can't wait to spend part of my weekend with that guy after spending Saturday uh, with Joe Buck. Uh, To this week, we're going to be talking about why the Dodgers just can't seem to beat the Padres anymore, the highs and lows of Julio Urias, and the reliever, the Dodgers reliever that not enough people are talking about who's had a pretty damn good season so far. So, Let's get into it. The Dodgers got swept by the Padres. Uh, you guys all know that. Twitter went nuts. Uh, they got swept in San Diego. Dodgers, Padres, Twitter, that place is a war zone. You better bring a helmet, some gauze, a suture kit. Uh, it's wild. I do not get involved. Uh, it scares the hell out of me. There's just some ruthless people out there. I mean, people are just, just collecting scalps uh, out there in Twitter. But l- l- let's talk about why the Dodgers lost the series and why they're 3-7 and seven against the Padres. A big reason why they're 3-7 and seven against the Padres this year. And Trevor Bauer talked about the intensity and just expecting to win those games. We can talk about the home field advantage that the Padres had and how for the first time in years they filled out the stadium with their own fans. Uh, we can talk about the crowd noise, the pressure. We-, we can talk about all that superlative stuff that's all subjective. Objectively, the Dodgers' offense is below average, well below average when they play the Padres. The Padres' pitching staff has completely neutralized the Dodgers. You look at, they got outscored 14 run, fourteen to 7 uh, in that three-game set. They just seem to have to eke out every single run and give credit to the Padres. They have a great game plan, but the Dodgers have professional hitters. We have all-stars up and down the lineup, and you look at, they're hitting, they have a 595 OPS against righties uh, and 655 against lefties. This is against the Padres. And a lot of the struggles for the Dodgers are with left handed pitching. We talked about that last week, but the righties for the Padres have dominated, dominated the Dodgers, especially Joe Musgrove, especially you, Darvish. And the strikeout rate is sky high. Uh, they're striking out almost a third of the time in general against the Padres. That creeps up to 31.3 against righties, it goes down to 26.7 against lefties. The Padres have dominated. The Dodgers need to put together some offense. And the most shocking stat that, for, that I found is the Dodgers in the first inning of the 10 Padres games are batting .097. .097. Sub 100. That is not good. You can't build some momentum in a game. You can't get runs on the board. Uh, at least start the process of getting your offense going uh, when you're just an automatic three outs in the first inning. It's not all on the lineup. I think like if we were slicing up the old blame pie, I would say the offense gets about 70% of it. They've been putrid. I appreciate what Justin Turner did in that series. I appreciate what Austin Barnes did in that series. But you look at those numbers there, they're 22% worse. You look at the way to ones created plus. They're, the Dodgers are 22% worse than league average when playing the Padres. Uh, last thing I'll touch on is the BABIP. League average is 300. They're hitting 253 against the Padres. So there is some bad luck there. All right, let's talk about it. One of the Another immensely talented starter for the Dodgers, but probably the most up and down as far as consistency of outings. Uh, Julio Urias, he dealt, dealt yesterday against, shoved, I believe the kids say, against the Chicago Cubs. 12 strikeouts. The Dodgers obviously won that on a walk-off. Cody Bellinger, 3-2. to two. Uh, But there's there's really two different Julio Ariases. There's Julio from yesterday and the Chicago Cubs, and the Seattle start, excuse me, uh, where he almost had a no-hitter and struck out double-digit hitters. And then there's the Julio who gave up five or more earned runs to the Giants, five or more earned runs to the Padres, and five or earned more runs to the Angels. I don't know why he struggles against the Dodgers rivals. And yes, I just called the Padres a rival. But he's just, he's in my, and look, I'm not smart enough to run like a regression deviation curve, but for it seems like Julio is either really, really good or really, really bad. And I think he just needs to be more consistent. A lot of that comes with the walk rate which he's just been wild. And you look at the RA and that's why it's ballooned because he just keeps walking guys. All right, last but not least, this guy, this hero, Phil Bickford, uh, a guy that I think has just been the second best reliever in the bullpen besides Kenley Jansen for my money. And what he did uh, Friday night, even though the Dodgers are getting no hit, they're down 3-0, but he comes in, bases loaded, zero out, and gets 
gets three outs, gets out of the inning, not a single run across. It was very impressive. But this is a guy that claimed off waivers. This is a guy who's from my hometown, Ventura. Woo! I don't actually know him, but according to baseball reference, he is. But not enough can be said about Phil Bickford and his contributions to this bullpen, especially with Corey Knievel and Gratterall still out. And look, this is a great find by Andrew Friedman. That's it. That's all I got, my friends. That is my time limit. Uh, Wish I would have spent a little more time on Phil Bickford, but the Padres just get me kind of riled up. So I will see you on the other side. Thank you for watching.